and the pop looks like being served with divorce papers or her finding her own apartment or whatever it mean whatever it whatever it is content's not important structure is important and the structure is you didn't see it coming and it's a drastic move of her breaking away from you and the family or the family she takes the kids hey i'm dennis the married man's coach if you are new to the channel and you're a man and you're married and you want more of the good things out of your marriage then go ahead and subscribe hit the bell icon and like this video just for good measure today i'm talking a little bit about um, walk away wife syndrome and why you should stop chasing her and in fact why that's the worst thing you can do if she's actually walked away <clears throat> so first what is walk away wife syndrome i went into this in a deeper video you can see that here also, uh, I'll go do a brief overview here. It's basically when um, when your wife suddenly, out of the blue, or seemingly out of the blue, just walks away. And this could be, you know, leaving to get her own apartment, or having a Facebook friend, or um, just filing for divorce without even coming it, seeing it coming. Basically, it's a blindside. You've been totally blindsided. And it's because um, things haven't, obviously things haven't been good from her end, but either she's not communicated in, um, to you or you've not picked up on her communication that things are not good or probably a bit of both. But you can see more about a greater in-depth uh, dive into, into that here. Okay, so what causes walk-away wife syndrome? Uh, so it could be anything, you know, maybe she doesn't like how you leave your dirty clothes on the floor. I don't really know. The content's not really important. The content's not really important. Uh, what's important is the structure and the structure is learned helplessness. And basically learned helplessness is a concept where the person, any person in any situation learns that no matter what he or she does, they won't get what they want. So they won't, they won't, they won't improve. Things won't get better. If they do X, things won't improve. If they do Y, things won't improve. So basically, for some reason, for whatever reason, your wife has gotten the, the understanding that marriage isn't going to get better. So her situation, which she perceives to be less than ideal, for whatever reason, isn't going to get better. And that implies that she's tried stuff. Now, her trying stuff and you understanding her to be trying stuff might be different and probably are different. But from her point of view, she's tried stuff and it's not worked. Now, whether or not that's good enough or whatnot, or, or is or isn't, you know, who knows, who cares, really. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter because she's walked away. Um, and so as she's with learned helplessness, she just kind of keeps this stuff locked up inside of her she's not doing anything she, nothing's working nothing's working so she stops doing anything and then it just kind of festers until it pops and the pop looks like being served with divorce papers or her finding her own apartment or whatever it mean whatever it whatever it is content's not important structure is important and the structure is you didn't see it coming and it's a drastic move of her breaking away from you and the family or the family she takes the kids so what do you do about it um, so if this is the case it's bad I mean we're not going to sugarcoat it around here but it's bad it's really bad and there's definitely no guarantees that you can do it I'm not gonna be able to tell you XYZ technique is going to get you ABC outcome because there's no guarantee like that I can share with you the strategy and it's the same strategy as it always was I can sh share the strategy with you that's going to increase um, the chances of you making things better. And that strategy is a less is more approach. A less is more approach. Uh, by the time a lot of men find themselves in hot water and marriage is on the rocks, about to be over, whatever it might be, um, they try to do a lot quickly. They try to fix everything right away. Um, and that just doesn't work. And it doesn't work because your wife's no longer attracted to you. That's one reason it doesn't work. Another reason it doesn't work is because these things take time. Like human beings often aren't quick fixes. And so, so, but the fact is if she's not attracted to you, 
I mean, that's it's baked into the premise, right? She's walked away. She's gone away. If she was attracted to you, she wouldn't be leaving walking away. So she's not attracted to you, and she's not attracted to the life that she imagines with you. She's not attracted to the family that you guys have built together. And I know that's hard to hear, and it should be, because it is. Uh, and whose fault that is and what, uh, you know, doesn't matter. Really doesn't matter. Because you're both responsible for it to some degree. And you're both responsible for it because you're in the situation. How else could it be? So a less is, less is more approach, and that's why you do not want to chase her. You do not want to chase her. Because uh, the more you chase her, the faster she'll run. And it doesn't mean if you don't chase her, she's going to stop running. It doesn't mean that. It does mean the more you chase her, the faster she'll run. Uh, and it's because you're going to appear even more unattractive. It's the catch-22. It's the catch-22. And so for this, there's no panacea. Like I said, there's no certain guarantees that I can give you. If you do X, Y, Z, you'll get ABC. Um, you may, I mean, you may not be able to fix this. You may not be able to fix this. And that's a certainty, or not a certainty, but that's a possibility you should become comfortable with. You don't have to like it, but you should become comfortable with it. Um, because it's a reality. It's definitely a possibility. And the more comfortable you become with it, the more that you can act in a calm, centered way. And acting in a calm, centered way is one of the things that's going to be more likely for your wife to want to come back towards you. So you got to get clear that you may not be able to fix this. So if she's not attracted to you, you want a less is more strategy, well, you got to become more attractive. And that is basically the that's basically self-improvement and not like feel good likes on Facebook or views on TikTok or whatever channel is your channel. It's not admiration from that channel. Self-improvement is should be painful and it should require your suffering um, in one way or another. And you're not doing it for to win bonus points on Facebook or whatever your channel is. You're doing it to mold yourself into a better man. Because hmm, who would have thought it? That's what women want including your wife and that's one of the reasons she's walking away because in some way you're not the man for her anymore or you're not a good enough man for her anymore and whether that's true or not i don't know but what's important is that she believes it to be true so we're not talking about objective reality here we're talking about your wife's impression or perception of you and that's really all that matters right now because she's the one walking away. And that doesn't mean you cater to it. It doesn't mean that you put her on a pedestal because that's bad news as well for a lot of good reasons. But it's true in her mind that you're not a good enough man for her anymore. She thinks she can do better. Or at least she'll think she'll be less worse off with you, without you, than with you. So the process of becoming more attractive is the process of becoming a better man. So the first and obvious thing is go look in the mirror. How much weight do you need to lose? And how, how dedicated have you been to actually doing that? I'm not a fitness coach or guru or anything like this, but I'm also not dumb. If you want to lose weight, you need to start in the kitchen and not in the gym. You should get in the gym to improve your cardiovascular health, to put on muscle mass, absolutely. You're not gonna lose weight in the gym. You're gonna lose weight in the kitchen. Uh, there's really obvious solutions to this right now. Low carb works great. I mean, I don't know. If you're, if you're overweight, okay, at some point you're gonna have to accept the fact that you're complicit in you being overweight and that the only way you're gonna not be overweight is by you being complicit and you not being overweight you're gonna have to you're gonna have to look in the mirror pretty hard and accept that you've done this to yourself and that it's not okay not because your wife doesn't find it attractive and that's a side effect of why it's not okay but because it's not healthy you deserve a better life than that and yes being at a healthy weight will make your life better 
So that's a, that's a big one. I mean, living in America, you know, I don't know what the current stat is, but it's something over north of 60% of people are overweight and 40% obese. So you know, that's, an, that's, that's an easy, not an easy, that's a simple place to start. It's an obvious place to start for a lot of people. Um, and then, so, but fitness means more than just like your, your waist size or whatever. It also means, it also means, um, you know, how strong are you? You should be in the gym getting stronger. That's an important part of being a good man is get being stronger and not so your wife is like, Oh wow, look at his biceps and putting her, her hands around your biceps. That's not why. Although it's a nice perk. It's because you're a man. And that means you have a masculine nature. And part of your masculine nature is to optimize your strength. Optimize your strength. It doesn't mean you compare yourself to other people. It means you get as strong as you can get. Um, and so the next area, so the fitness finances, right? Money is a big part of attraction for women to men. I know that's not politically correct, but it's true. And I don't know if you've ever seen the... Um, the uh, sort of sexual marketplace curve in terms of the supply and demand, but I'll put it here, you can see it here. This, um, as a man gets older, he tends to become more attractive. Um, and that's in part because his amount of power and wealth go up. And also a woman's attractiveness tends, tends to go down over age. And that's because a loss and fertility and beauty and that's what men men want women who are beautiful and fertile um i mean we can look past for that for the sake of our families at times of course but we have an animal and that animal reacts to beautiful and fertile and so any anything that you can be doing in terms of like your your career moving up in your career, getting better, making progress, making progress in some way. And if your career is, you're kind of at the limit there, okay, fine. Then what do you need to do to make it better in other ways? Do you need to invest more? Do you need a side gig? What do you need? But there's progress to be made, so make it. And for, for you guys, like in all of these, some of these you're probably um, doing fine and you don't really need to spend much time on it. Find the one that's the weakest and focus on that. Okay, and the, the next one is frame. And so frame, this is the slipperiest of the fish, of the, of the F fish. Frame is basically, it's your worldview. How do you see the world? And that includes your belief about yourself, your belief about other people, your belief about the world. And those are kind of the three spheres philosophically, like yourself, the other, and then the world. And the other can include your boss, but it also includes your wife. So how you relate to those those three spheres, how do you how you um, how you what you believe about yourself in relation to those three spheres all affect your worldview, and that means that all affects it. It affects your the worldview is really important because it affects everything that you do, how you operate in the world. It's everything, and that's kind of why it's the <clears throat> slipperiest of fish. Because you can't see it, you can't touch it. You can kind of see, you can you can catch glances of it when you maybe analyze how you reacted in a situation or how you felt in a situation. You can kind of get glances at it, but it's it's hard to it's hard to pin down. And don't expect to do it quickly. You know, keep your eyes open, keep your mind open, and look for it. And the last one here is faith. You're a man of God. God puts you on this world to have a relationship with him. And so uh, it is your responsibility to become a godly man and a godly leader. And that means cultivating a personal relationship with God. And it's in your best interest to do that. And it's the in the best interest of your family to do that. And the way the family works, the family hierarchy works, is you go first. And so if the level of faith in your family is not where you want it to be, well, it might be because your faith is not where you want it to be. So that's, that's, where, you, uh, that's where you go for that. So you got to lead here. you gotta, you got to lead in the area of faith. And I won't say too much more about that one because, um, you know, that's probably my, personally, my weakest area. 
and I'm struggle to keep keep my faith up and keep uh, my relationship with God and um, yeah and I think it's a personal thing too it's not kind of hard to, to talk much about somebody else's faith uh, relationship with God but if your wife is walking away don't chase her don't chase her chase your own mastery in these four areas first and then she'll start chasing you maybe because there's no guarantees remember all right stay tuned guys all the best to you